Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's project is my 1986 Suzuki FA50. This sat for quite a while in my shed, actually four, about four years to be exact, because after I bought it, it quit running, it lost spark, and at the time I couldn't figure out why. And I finally got around to pulling it out, thinking that I was gonna have all kinds of work ahead of me all these years and realized it was just a bad spark plug wire from the coil to the plug, very minor. And so I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't discover that years ago. But anyway, that's how it went and we've got it back out now. So it is running pretty well actually. It just has a few issues that we need to address and so I thought I would bring you guys along with me. One thing, you can see this puddle underneath. That is, I'll try and show it, you're not going to be able to see very well, but it's coming out of our overflow barb on the bottom of the carburetor bowl. And I've adjusted the float to actually higher than I think, or lower than I think it should be, and it still has not stopped the problem. So what we're dealing with there is most likely a bad seal between our needle and seat. One thing that's kind of interesting on this carburetor, and I haven't figured out why, is that it doesn't have a seat, like a, a rubber seat in the carburetor, and it also does not have a rubber tip on the needle. It's just brass against uh, steel or aluminum or whatever that needle is. So I'm not exactly sure how it's expected to seal when you've just got a, an all metal seal there. Um, but that's the way it is. That's what I've confirmed by looking at parts, kits, and diagrams, and everything. So, anyway, I've cleaned that a couple times now, and it's still doing it. So just my temporary fix is going to be to add a shutoff right in here on the line coming out of the factory petcock. So this will just be a quick fix to get us by until we actually fix or replace the carburetor. But the other problem is that my understanding of this petcock is that it doesn't have an off position. It just has a prime, a reserve, and an on. And what those three positions are is there's two barbs coming out of the tank. One is up higher and has a screen. One is at the very bottom and has no screen. And then uh, we've got our third position, which is prime. So the upper position is on. That's the upper fuel line on the tank with the screen. And then the lower one is reserve. And that's because once you get below a certain point in the tank, you're gonna be below your on barb and down to that reserve. So you'll flip to that. That'll utilize the other line. And the third position is prime, which in my research is gonna be your on, your on position fuel hose, but it's on all the time like straight through, where when you're in the on position, you're relying on vacuum from the carburetor to activate a fuel pump and pump that fuel into the carburetor. So kind of interesting, but we will take a look at adding this shutoff here in just a second. Bam, just like that. Got it on. I didn't want to show, I figured it's uh, kind of a basic thing, so not worth videoing, but just got my inline shutoff, and again, this is temporary until we fix things properly, but I just didn't want to drain my fuel tank every time I park it. So this is a, a good fix for you guys if you need that, and we will actually dive into what the problem is on a future episode um, of this short series. But anyway, we have two problems, as I mentioned, with the petcock. It should be shut off when the engine is off, even though the petcock is in the on position, our diaphragm is not pumping. So we shouldn't be getting fuel through there. So I don't know if we have a, a bad O-ring or a hole in our diaphragm or what the deal is. I did have it apart once and I thought I replaced the O-rings properly, but it could be that they were not quite the right size and I know for sure they weren't fuel rated. So that's not a good thing. So we'll try and get that fixed hopefully on the next episode. Something else that I wanted to look at is for whatever reason, when I took this apart, I lost a variety of parts. And one of those parts was the turn signal flasher. You'll find that on your FA50 
in the headlight housing. So we'll take a look. There's one unidentified pair of wires, and I had to look up what they were on a wiring schematic for this. They're an orange and a blue wire. You'll see right here, that's where my turn signal flasher used to be, and for whatever reason I unhooked that and lost it. So what I did, you can buy one online, I think they're maybe $15 or $20, something like that and then you wait for it to arrive, obviously. What I wanted to do, just because I was anxious, is I ordered one from my auto parts store locally. They got it here next day. This is a three pin, but one pin is for um, like a signal uh, dash light or something like that on the vehicle this is used on. And so all we need to do is just not use one pin, is my understanding. So. I need to pull up a diagram before I let you guys know what pin does what. You can see there they're labeled L, P, and X. Um, my research is that L is for the load, so that'd be for your lights. X is your incoming power, 12 volts. And then I think P is for that gauge that we're not using. But I want to double check that and make sure I'm giving you the right information. And we will get this hooked up, test our lights and go for just a quick spin. So stay tuned, we'll be back in just a second. So I got myself a special little tool here. This is, I don't know why the camera does not focus lately. This is just a very tiny little precision screwdriver that's basically junk. It came for free in some cell phone rebuild kit or something, I don't remember. But basically I ground this down very thin to act as a pin release tool. And so what you do, I can show you, you can see in there there's a locking pin that's holding the spades into this plastic body. I'm just going to stick the screwdriver in and release those. That way I can make my connections opposite each other instead of in this L pattern. And I was correct, X is your incoming battery, L is your lights or your load, and P is for basically ground, but that goes to that always-on lamp in certain cases. So we'll see whether or not we need to ground that to have lights or not. But for now, we're just going to attach our incoming battery to X and our outgoing lights to L. So I'm just going to de-pin these. I don't know if I can get it on camera, because I'm probably going to need both hands. But basically, you can see I'm sticking that in there so it pushes down on that locking pin. And then I should be able to pull out on the wire, and I just can't do it one-handed. But that will allow that to slide right out. I'll do that quick and show you what it looks like. With the moped running now, we're just going to take our voltmeter and check which wire has power. This will be kind of tricky one-handed, but you've got to have it running or else you don't have any lights other than your tail light. I'm going to try to get my ground to rest there. I've got the turn signals turned on. And we'll just check here. There's our orange wire, 6 volts. There's our blue wire, 0 volts. So our orange is our incoming power. We'll attach that to X on the back of our 6 volt flasher. And we'll attach the blue wire to L. I'm going to shut the signals off just so I don't risk damaging something. So we'll go to X here and L here. I'm going to turn the signals back on and we do have signals. Look at that. Let's double check the other side. Let's confirm on the rear. Got the left on. And finally, the right rear. There you go. So that's a confirmed repair. And we've even got our flasher up on the dash. So I hope that helps you guys on that. Now I'm trying to think if we had any other loose ends to tie up. I think the only other thing I wanted to do that I can think of is if you look here, I've got the wheel as straight as possible. The handlebars are aiming slightly to the left. And so I'd like to get that centered up 
basically the main annoyance there is that the headlight doesn't point exactly in the direction you're going. And so I think all I need to do is loosen up this nut right on top and I can turn my handlebars to match my wheel just right and then lock that back down. So I'll probably do that off camera. It's just going to be a simple adjustment. And we'll pick up with our fuel issue on the next episode. So taking the carburetor apart, cleaning it, I might put a rebuild kit in it at this point. And then we'll test, and if we still have a leak, we'll disassemble our pet cock and see what the case might be there. So, hope you guys enjoy this little series. Oh, and it looks like we're going to need new tires in the near future, too. So, we'll try and put that on a, on a third installment. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the series. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys on the next video.